What's going on everybody? So today I'm going to show you the seat pan tray that I created. Um, I thought I recorded the video but I guess it didn't work because uh, 10 seconds in there's just no footage so apologize about that but I'll show you what I did. It's pretty simple. Um, and then after that I'm going to start working on the exhaust. I've already removed the exhaust and I make a video for that because it's pretty easy uh, and straightforward. I did have to chop it up though to get it out because there's just no other way, at least with the tools I have and the lift I have. I'll show you what I did right quick on the subframe seat pan tray. I have my subframe there. Um, don't mind the mess here. All I did was I've got some flat steel. I tack welded it in place for now in case I need to make changes. And I basically measured up to the subframe itself. Um, and then it just kind of fit in there. And then this is just sheet metal that I've tacked on for now. Um, and I, do, I did the same thing on the front here. Um, <clears throat> and this should hold all my wiring and stuff. So it's pretty simple. It's four pieces and then this sheet metal here and then here just to cover it up. Um, and that should just do the job. So I'm not 100% pleased with it. If you look at the subframe from the side now, you can see the pan uh, stick down a bit. So it's kind of an eyesore. You don't really notice it. I'm hoping when I paint it black, it'll just kind of be gone or be a little bit more visible. But um, it was fairly simple to do, it didn't take me that long. And all I did was I just grabbed some of the stock bar from uh, Home Depot. It's, uh, it's an eighth of an inch by one and a quarter uh, wide. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead, I'll show you the exhaust. So I did take off the exhaust here. Um, this part here was really hard to take out because it ran through this part of the frame. So I did have to cut that up. Uh, the front was pretty self-explanatory. Um, so I'm gonna start working on the exhaust and I'll show you what I do. So I'm gonna be making my exhaust pieces right now. Right out of the bat on the back cylinder, I need to make like a very sharp 90 degree bend. Uh, two of them, so I'm gonna be using pie cuts to make this exhaust. Um, I've never done this before and I just watched a quick video on how to do this. My understanding is you grab your pipe, you find the center on both sides, like you cut it in half, you mark it with the marker as I did on the, see that line there? So on the adjacent side, there's the exact same line uh, that marks the halfway point on this pipe. You can also look inside the pipes. Oftentimes there's uh, two marks there that would indicate the centers. Um, and then from here on to make 90 degree cuts, or pie cut pieces rather, um, I would need 10 of them at four and a half degree cuts on both sides to make a full 90. So I've never done this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try chopping up this piece as a trial, uh, and then I'll come back and see how I did. So I've cut up all the pieces on my chop saw. Um, I don't have a dry cut blade, I have one of those uh, black ones that make a lot of mess, so. This is the pieces here. Um, I found when I was doing this, and this is something I didn't find when I was researching how to do these types of cuts. The reason you're marking the center lines on both of, uh, on the pipe basically, is so that when you're, when you have the piece in the machine, all you have to do is cut one and then rotate it to the other one, cut the other so that the short side, um, I didn't have a gate or a fence on the chops I have, so, the short side will always touch on this line that's on the gate and I just kind of tried to eyeball where it was. I made sure that the line was always facing up uh, as straight as possible um, and then that gave me all my pie cuts if you will. So because of the type of blade I'm using it's going to be really ugly and tedious to clean this up. I found the best way to clean this, um, kind of going to be like a two or three step process is use some tin snips and just snip around the uh, the pieces there and you can get these shards off uh, relatively easy and then I'm going to use my bench grinder to just sand it smooth and finish it off and then I'll use a rat tail file on the inside pieces because um, here I can also chop this off here but it's still going to be jagged so I'll use the rat tail file to finish off the inside of the tubes and uh, yeah so it's going to take a little bit of time because I have probably 20 or 25 of these things um, but I think it'll be worth it. So once I clean that up, I'll come back and I'll show you all the pieces and how they line up. I've been grinding these things away. 
It's starting to take shape, but it's super, super tedious. To give you an idea here of what happens is those marks I have, um, I can line them up and then it kind of gives me the angle I want. The benefit of doing these pie cuts is that I can also like twist the, um, so as you can see I can twist the curve as I please so I can make it snake if I wanted to. So right now I'm just trying to line up as best as I can quickly the mark so you can kind of see that the 90s is starting to take shape here. So that's going to be the 90. These are really small pipes, um, so it's kind of hard to work with, but you get the idea. So that's all going to line up and be tacked in, and then I can get around the uh, really tight corner on the back cylinder. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to work with this and figure out how I can tack this because I don't have welding magnets, um, just so I can get the shape going. I've already gone ahead and started tacking this, so now I made the bends I needed to get around the rear cylinder. Um, it's going to have to be turned a little bit like this just because the way the layout is. That's why I had to do these types of cuts. Everything's tacked together now and it's relatively smooth, like it's not bad. Um, but I think it's going to look pretty cool. So I'm going to try to go ahead and piece together the rest of the exhaust now. Um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll show you guys how to do it or what my plan is. The plan for the rear cylinder here is I'm going to obviously have these pieces come out. Um, that's the flange I'm going to weld to, it's just loosely in there. But ideally I'm going to then put a straight piece here. And then I'm going to put 190 here. I'm going to put a 90 there and then I'm going to wrap around another 90. And then it's just going to be an open exhaust coming out back here somewhere and then I'm going to work on the front one to kind of also be an open side exhaust uh, to come up back here and then I might connect them to some sort of uh, small little muffler or I might just leave them open. Okay, I've gotten the first elbow finished. I welded the whole thing and grinded it because my welds were atrocious. Um, doesn't look all that bad, so I think it's gonna look pretty good once I paint it. I'm probably just gonna heat wrap the entire exhaust, um, but it's not a bad shape, and I got the shape I needed to fit around the rear cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one, start working on the exhaust, but this is just taking a lot longer than I anticipated. This is the completed exhaust. I welded everything up together, and then I painted with high heat uh, paint in black. Um, the lobster clamp stuff is actually kind of cool. It gave me a pretty good turn. Uh, the welds are heinous. I intentionally left the welds unfinished and uh, kind of rough like that. I'm gonna heat wrap this entire exhaust anyways. Um, so this is the shape I'm going for. There's still missing a section here that's gonna finish off uh, to make it longer, but I'll do that after it's on the bike. And with regards to the front cylinder, I'm just going to reuse the old exhaust. So I'm going to go ahead and install this and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing here. So this is the finished product on the bike. Again, I still have to do the heat wrap, which I've ordered and it's on its way. So all these bends here, that's why I had to do these pie cuts here uh, to make sure I can get around this piece of the frame. Uh, the original exhaust went through there and then it went down and wrapped around into here, but I want it to go this way. Um, and then it clears, it's not touching anything on the engine. Um, I think it's gonna go down, so this is just temporary right now, it's not really in there. Um, so it actually is gonna go, it's actually gonna go a little more straight. Um, I just haven't decided what I wanna do here. So with it coming out like this, I might get a Y piece to connect both these two pipes and then uh, go into a single muffler. Um, I just haven't really decided. It kind of looks cool with two straight pipes. Um, but again, I'm not 100% I'm not sure what I want to do yet, so I'm going to leave it. But essentially the exhaust is on. I need to make a couple brackets to support it so it doesn't fall or crack or whatever. Um, and then here I want to tie them together as well. 
And then what I did for the front cylinder, I basically just reused the factory pipe. I just took off most of the bulk and then just connected it all back there. I was going to make it go into here, but um, I think this design just kind of works better. It's less complicated and it's quicker. Uh, this took me a lot of time to do and a lot of effort. I don't know if I want to really do it over again. The stock pipe does look thicker, um, but it's not. The inside of the actual pipe is the same one and a half inches as this stuff, but this is just double walled. Um, I guess to give it a better finish or whatnot, so it looks thicker, but it's actually the same size. I think once I put the heat wrap on everything, you won't even be able to tell. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty impressed and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Here's a seat pan tray. In case you missed it last time. And then, now the reason I did the exhaust like this was to free up all this space right here. Uh, that's where the center kickstand used to be, but now I'm going to be able to put the battery there. Uh, that's why I wanted the exhaust to come out this way. So that frees up a lot of space down here. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.